first got released. So we see, we see an increasing awareness of the general public into how much tax is paid in the countries where companies are operating. And you also see that trend uh, scale, scaling up to international organizations like the OECD with the BEPS uh, initiative, and also the UN initiative on the same matter. So what we want to address is basically how corporate social responsibility relates to tax, mainly how to the awareness of the public change on the tax base per country or countries where companies are operating. And you see that with Microsoft, you see that with Apple, and all of this actually eventually generate to companies some hearings in the Senate or some state aid cases here in the EU, and even um, it, it generated tax assessments based on this uh, increasingly increasingly light that has been shed onto how much tax is paid uh, by corporations. Next slide, please. Okay, so here I try to address the question, is paying tax really a corporate social responsibility issue? If we're talking about corporate social responsibility and the, and the role that corporations have in our um, society, uh, I need to think, well, there's a line of thought that would say the corporates are part of the social contract, of the social contract. So governments, NGOs, corporates and the city is all part of the social contract. We all agree uh, to have a balanced set of rights and responsibilities to build a functional society. Are corporates uh, filling their end of the bargain? Are tax authorities filing their end of the bargain as part of an, a government arm? This is all questions that we can address here. And um, we, we see an increasing um, interest of non NGOs um, also talking about tax, talking about tax justice, linking this, uh, how corporations actually evading uh, sources of income from countries and from societies, and they're publishing this uh, report for the general public that's maybe 20 years ago not aware or didn't make the connection of paying tax and being a good corporate, but now this is increasingly uh, being more connected and uh, making a statement out there that if you're not paying tax, you're not a good corporate and therefore uh, you might not be uh, building your sets of responsibilities in this society. So uh, what we put this in the in this slide is, so there are some journalist initiatives and some NGOs initiatives where um, they initiate investigations, they share that, they put public pressure on the corporations, um, on their brands, um, even with customers boycotting companies, what happened in the Starbucks in the UK at the EU state aid became publicly known. Uh, in the Starbucks in the UK, many people just did a boycott the Starbucks, of course. And um, so the question that I would like to address here, maybe to Luan, our panelist, uh, is minimizing tax a, leg a legitimate corporate goal, is, this, is it okay to be a legitimate corporate goal uh, in the line of uh, all this was talked about and paying a 1.21 1 or even 2% corporate tax? Uh, is that in line with CSR? Is this a corporate social responsibility or not? Or is tax not part of a good corporate citizenship? Maybe Luan, if you would like to give your comments on that, uh, that would be appreciated. Uh, I think you're on mute, Luan. Still cannot hear you. Yeah, now you can hear me. Yes? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, of course, no. If, uh, if uh, corporates are paying 1% to 2% in corporation tax, that's not in line with the corporate social responsibility. I, I, I fully agree with that. But that's not uh, ending the, the discussion, I think. And the discussion is about whether it is in total, um, on, a, on, a, on a global basis, paying 1% to 2% on, 
or a Muda more than that. And what I see here is that the the tax justice and other uh, NGOs are just um, focusing on paying uh, tax per country. And it could be that there are some countries uh, in which they are paying really less tax and other countries that they are paying more tax. And then it's about a sort of weighted average of paying the tax paid uh, around the world, which is uh, tantamount to the, the judgment whether it is in line with the CSR. Uh, so uh, the uh, simple answer is not possible, but um, if it is done per country, yeah, it's, in, my, in my opinion, it's questionable. What is not questionable is that the, the, the findings from the Panama and Paradise papers, because these are just demonstrating the huge um, um, avoidance and evasion of taxes by prominent persons in the world by, by um, uh, loading there in, in, in countries where no tax, their total income, and that's also not only corporate tax, but also income tax in jurisdictions where they are hardly paying any tax. So then it's on a global, it's on a global uh, basis that they don't pay tax. But if you are talking about the multinationals, the corporates, yes, sometimes they are not paying tax in their head country, in their head office country, but then they will pay tax in other countries. And if you uh, add up all these taxes, uh, and then it's it, the, the next question is also, is paying up taxes, is that, sim is that equivalent to paying the statutory rate of tax? Or could an effective rate also be low the statutory rate? And I think that could be the case. We have in the in Netherlands and in many countries so-called uh, participation exemption. So if if corporates are built up of uh, head offices, uh, parent, com parent companies and subs subsidiaries, yeah, a lot of dividends in, in the Netherlands are not are not taxed, but there has been taxation in other co uh, countries. And then the effective tax rate in the, in the Netherlands is less than the, the 25%. But in other countries, it could be more than 25%, could also be less than tax 5%. But even if it is less, then it's not said that that is not in line with corporate social responsibility. So the question is far more difficult and complex than uh, putting it as a proposition right away as some uh, NGOs uh, are, are used to do. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, if we're talking about corporate social responsibility and linking that to tax, because I think previously uh, corporate social responsibility was more connected of uh, how companies contribute to society and their impact on society, but the tax plays a huge role on it. And uh, if we're talking, of course, uh, sometimes it can be very, it can be very sensationalist what you see in newspapers, for example. So company is not paying the tax that is due, but I think what we need to address here is also the tax policy of states and how they choose to tax certain uh, profits yeah. or not. And that pay, plays a huge impact on the corporation and how the corporation is paying tax. So sometimes this, uh, this news from these uh, NGOs, they're misleading in the sense that they don't take into account the policy of that country and what the country is aiming to tax. And I think that's what we see in the next slide. Um, can you please pass to the next slide? So, um, so corporate social responsibility, sometimes tax, uh, uh, sometimes tax liability and enforcing their corporate responsibility has been on, on the agenda of several countries. And they get this guidance from international bodies like the OECD and the UN, and even the EU with their ATAD and DAXIS initiative. These are all ways of uh, making sure corporates are complying with their role in society. So OECD FEPS is talking about base erosion and profit shifting from source countries, while the EU directives such as the ATAD and DAXIS are talking about the avoidance rules and how to not shift profits and that six uh, more focusing on intermediaries uh, like PPA, for example, and UN measures, they're usually uh, directed to developed countries and Latin America measures against corruption. As the example of Colombia, Brazil, Brazil had a huge uh, scandal of corruption and there were several measures there were done into tax law to try to mitigate this issue. 
So while these are not global measures to enforce corporate social responsibility, they do influence corporate social responsibility. They do influence how companies act into the world. In the next slide, you will see actually a matrix where here at TPA, we have tried to map several initiatives and um, try to find out where do they fit in a global map, for example. And we have discussed this in previous, uh, in previous days of the, of the conference. So basically, there are several players uh, active in tax policy. We have unilateral measures like the countries measures, and we have uh, OECD with standard uh, global measures, and we have the EU. How these countries are acting in tax policy, not necessarily sometimes it's coordinated, so it's mostly uncoordinated, and sometimes they're even talking about the same profits. And when they are talking about the same profits and they create different measures and there are companies that fall into the, these categories, they might be taxing the same income twice. So if you take uh, here in the example, you have BAPS. BAPS is, a, BAPS is a policy that was designed to the country of destination and it's based on economic principles. So that's the, rule, the, the backbone of BAPS. But if you talk about the CCTB, which is a formularic approach, you have CCTB kind of half in the middle, which is focusing on legal principles and is not favoring either the country of destiny or the country of source. It's more um, trying to apportion uh, in a formularic way. And you have unilateral standards, which are standards that do usually for economic principles and focusing on the country of source. And you have the EU digital economy uh, proposal, which is a legal principle, is that digital service tax, and um, it's usually favoring the country of destination. So there is a, there is a, a current this uncoordination between countries and uh, international organizations on how to tax certain incomes or certain profits. And this seems to, to also get caught in the middle of the corporate social responsibility issue. So if we're talking about corporate social responsibility, you also need to be aware that corporates sometimes trying to do their best to disclose what it needs to be disclosed and to pay the fair amount, uh, whatever fair means in, in the sense, the fair amount that is due in the countries. They usually face issues like this one, this war on tax from different organizations. And um, maybe Luan, do you, do you have a take on this uh, tax policy issue, this war on taxes that we currently face and how this actually in, impacts uh, how corporates are disclosing their tax paid? Uh, uh, you're referring to the, uh, yeah, to the, sh to the, uh, the scheme we have in front of us that, that, yeah. that will impact, that will impact uh, corporates very much. It's, uh, Partly, it's 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 uh, it's 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 justified that to, to, that uh, supranational organizations uh, in, include and uh, uh, import that, that kind of measures because there's a lot of tax planning going on, which is uh, taking taking course of of, of double dips or uh, paying no tax at all at certain transactions, like uh, different uh, actions uh, or BEPS, so action two, the hybrid uh, mismatch. Uh, situations and I can imagine that they do that because it uh, it solves uh, yeah some some aggressive forms of tax planning. On the other hand, um, I, I I still think that um, then, and that's also partly an answer to the to the to the previous question that what co what big corporates do nowadays not in the old days but nowadays that they, they see tax taxes. Is, is the result of a democratic process between parties and therefore it should bind all the citizens and all the participants in the in the societal societal uh, process so the citizens so therefore it has to be taxed it has to be paid at the statutory rate that's for income tax that's for uh, VAT tax and that's for corporate tax but at the other hand uh, tax uh, uh, corporates see tax as a kind of cost as an expenditure which has to which has to match all the the, the other expenditures it's one of the on top of the other expenditures we have to do in, in making a profit and as an expenditure it's 
narrows uh, its its channel to to uh, for instance to to strive uh, to to full uh, full employment to to take into uh, into considerations all the employees they can hire for research and development production uh, sale and whatever and to to guarantee uh, an employee uh, uh, remuneration for their self and their, their their family, which they otherwise would not uh, be be uh, entitled to, and that's another point. And one third point is that we had in the old school there was a sort of capitalistic economy. Let's let's call it that way. It's not it's not meant in, in the Marxist. Uh, uh, model, but that it, yeah, well, it was a capital that was uh, focused on shareholder uh, value increase. Now we have an economy which is focused on stakeholder uh, increase, the increase of the interest of stakeholders. Shareholder is only one of the stakeholders. The other one has the employees, are the environment, the society, uh, whatever uh, you can think of, uh, the the suppliers, the the customers. And so on and so forth, and in order to service the the the, the, uh, the yeah let's let's see the, the the Porter model of the value chain to service the the incoming and the outcoming uh, parts of the of the value chain, they have to 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 create some room in order to be able to do that, and in this perspective you can blame them if they try to minimize not to minimize. To, but to control their tax inspector expenditure in order to fulfill their societal uh, uh, to societal uh, duties, and uh, in that case, well, it's like it's like with slavery. It's the next generations will be, be indicted for the fact that they are, are doing something that the foregoing generation have have performed. So in the capitalist uh, era, yes, it was only shareholder shareholder value which they are striving to, and there, therefore they try to minimize taxes. Now they try to minimize taxes in order to serve a lot of purposes and a lot of objectives, which are much broader than only to to to, to be in, in in tax havens and to to uh, install all their remaining cash uh, and cash equivalents in a tax haven. With, as a sort of debt capital, nobody has access to, and nobody, nobody can 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 benefit from the from the assistance thereof. So that's also a last point I will bring forward. Yeah, I think uh, uh, that's an interesting take. Thank you, Luan. I think we can now like uh, discuss how tax policy can impact CSR and the current tax policy arena. I think we can move to examples of CSR uh, on tax. Uh, and that starts in the next slide. So, for example, Anglo Americans, one of the mining companies, a UK based mining company, that does disclose their payments to the government, including tax. And the way they do that is quite uh, out of the ordinary because they explain how these taxes are generated across the life cycle of a mining project. And they show, for example, that two thirds of their tax payments are made in developing countries. So, this is their disclosure on tax. And how this impacts the core, the the countries where they are um, operating. So this is one example. There's a, a reporting that is not usual, or at least is not regulated. It's not mandatory for Congress to do, but Anglo America does it. And this is different from, for example, the country by country report, which is a corporate income tax report, and the tax charts that is in the financial statements. What Anglo American is doing is actually they're explaining how the taxes are generated on their uh, on their operations, and this uh, that's how they report a total tax contribution by country, and this is part of their economic value added included, uh, even tax paid and collect. Um, so I think that's a, a good example of CSR on tax. So how corporate social, social responsibility on tax is done by a few corporates. In the next example you actually see that uh, we have more companies, especially in mining, uh, they are doing the same. So the next one is about BHP. Can I move to the next slide? Yeah. So BHP, it's a, it's a, it's a company that uh, there was 
um, sex scandal, there was a Senate inquiry, and they refused, for example, to review uh, the amount of uh, claims and taxes um, on their alleged tax avoidance in the Singapore Sling. For many that, I don't know if you all know, but the Singapore Sling is something used by uh, mining comp companies. And this um, not only affected BHP, but also Rio Tinto. And BHP took a position that uh, they were not going to disclose certain numbers because that was uh, commercial sensitive. And they cited this commercial sensitivity for not revealing the figures on their Singapore operations. And, um, and they also refused to answer some questions from the senators. Um, and this was BHP position. So you see Anglo-American, it was all about disclosing the tax they were paid across their life cycle and uh, being very transparent about it. And BHP not being so transparent, citing this is commercial sensitivity. And in the next example, we have Rio Tinto style of communication. And the style of communication of Rio Tinto was actually uh, much different from BHP. And they are in the same industry. They did uh, for years and years, they, uh, they did disclose their tax paid. And they have a report just solely on that. And uh, they also got questioned by the Senate. But at the same time, they were being more transparent about it and sharing their report. So here you see a snippet of a video is only 44 seconds of the CFO at the time, Chris Lynch, interviewing him for parents. And I just would like you guys to see this video now and uh, foresee the style of communication that we that Rio Tinto chose. Okay, so, um, so here you saw how Rio Tinto CFO was uh, explaining how their uh, paid tax report works. And uh, that's a style of, of communication that we chose to have uh, in uh, opposite to BHP, and that's what uh, Safe was also alluding to in the previous panel discussion. So what you see on the screen now, it's um, an example of the uh, Rio Tinto's um, tax reporting, and you can find that uh, on their public website. And this is uh, how they choose to disclose their tax. Um, it's not; it's similar to what Anglo American does it, but Anglo American does it through the whole cycle. Rio Tinto has just a more extensive report. Um, so that's uh, also an example of how uh, their style of communication can differ of companies in the same industry. And is that transparency of Rio Tinto actually paying off? That's a question that we can ask. Um, and maybe Luan, do you have any take on this, on uh, the transparency of uh, Tinto BHP or how the CSR yeah. issue goes for, for tax? Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. The transparency is, is, is always a good thing to, to strive for. Uh, well, so that uh, corporates need to be transparent and what we Tinto does is very good and, and, and very, uh, uh, Yes, but, but promoting uh, a, a sort of uh, confidence with the tax authority. Uh, the other point is that uh, to be tax transparent doesn't mean that you have to answer all the questions from tax uh, auditors or for, from tax officers, because uh, it's also it is a level playing field, and you are entitled to uh, to protect your your business secrets and to protect your your. Uh, the line of defense uh, that that's the same as in in, in each court uh, court case as well there is a sort of playing uh, the, the the rules of the of the game that you have to follow and that's also with the tax auditor because they can go that far that they will in, in total your whole organization and and uh, yeah re reverse the burden of proof so that you have to prove that something is rightfully uh, done uh, or tax tax planning uh, in, instead of that they have to prove that that is unrightfully done so transparency is anyway a good a good thing but based on a on a level pay of playing field in the end yeah yeah i agree i mean uh, not necessarily i think one important point to say is also being transparent not necessarily means that you need to disclose every and every single thing uh, and there's no right to style of communication. So again, uh, the next slide shows, did it, does it pay off to be transparent, for example, with uh, the UHP? 
uh, in the end, they both had their tax assessments with the Australian tax authorities. They both had to fight certain, uh, certain in, uh, tax assessments for certain years. And in the end, the amount itself, you can agree that maybe doesn't differ that much. But Rio Tinto has a proactive way of communicating to the ATO in um, despite the HP being very secretive. And the most important about being secretive is when there is no, um, when your competitor already shared their numbers. So for example, for BHP, it looks a lot harder to not be transparent since the Rio Tinto is so transparent and is sharing about their operations and they have similar structures. So that makes the ATO very, very skeptical about your position. And uh, I think that's one point that we would like to bring in here. And in the and in the last slide, we are actually talking about how corporate social responsibility can actually add value to your company. So more than ever, and today nowadays, you see uh, awareness, as we mentioned with all the tech scandals, you see awareness of the customers, and they can even boycott companies. Uh, if they feel that the company is not uh, playing their right role uh, in society and they are not sustainable enough. So you're disclosing your corporate social responsibility also help people engage with your brand and with your operations. Uh, also, employees and investors are more and more looking at the CSR part of your annual reports and are passing that straight. So they launch initiatives like the CO2 emission, recycling, fighting poverty. So that are all measures that are being looked at when uh, investors and employees are looking for that for, for the company. And there's also um, other initiatives that uh, it might be useful to mention that there is to improve transparency for companies and customers employees and investors, um, contributions to the community welfare. So all of this is something that not just the, the corporates or the tax authorities are aware of, but also customers. And it's, it's important that uh, we attain to these facts and the corporate social responsibility is not something that is just in the back page of your annual report, uh, but actually can add value to your company, can help people engage with your company, can help investors and can help employees as well. So I think that was the take of this breakout room. And um, Luan, do you have any additional comments? Yeah, well, I, I, I think that, uh, that, it, yeah, uh, that the increasing importance of CSR is a fact of life, that that's a very good thing. Uh, so they have, the, the company should uh, continue to, to be transparent at all, at all levels. Uh, the only point is that you never will persuade uh, activist type of of organizations like like Greenpeace and other ones or the and uh, NGOs because they 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 act as an activist and not the, they are not the 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 the, 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 the civilian uh, population at large uh, but uh, so they can uh, the, the transparency is very good about CO two emissions and recycling that's the the stakeholders will will be grateful than that but there all there will be some some parties uh, who, who want to, to attack only uh, as, as of it is for, for, for political purposes. So you have to, there is, there is a borderline in uh, being as transparent also in the interest of the corporate itself. And it is in the interest of the corporate itself and not only, on, not only for the profitable part of it, but it's also in the interest of the, of the, of the um, society at large, I think. Yeah, I agree. So I would like to open this uh, last five minutes for questions. Uh, please type your questions in the group chat if you'd like us to answer it. Uh, otherwise, if we have no questions, uh, we'll have a five minute break before the next panel discussion. And I'd like to thank Luan. That was a very interesting intervention. Yeah. And I would like to thank everyone thank also you. in this breakout room and. Uh, Please, if you have any questions, uh, drop a line to us. Otherwise, um, we'll have a five minutes break and you'll be automatically redirected to the panel discussion.